Hello, beautiful women. Welcome to She Talks, a space for you to come home to your inner wisdom, which I call your she. I'm Sarah Von Stover, a yoga and meditation instructor, teacher of feminine spirituality and empowerment, best-selling author, and founder of The Way of the Happy Woman. Now, since seasons and cycles are the heartbeat of our global community, I wanted to point out that last week we passed through the milestone of Imbolc, which here in the Northern Hemisphere marks the halfway point between winter and spring. So that means we're in the time of the year when the seeds deep inside the earth, like all the cells in our bodies, start to turn towards the light. And these seasonal touchstones offer us chances to pause and reflect. Winter, the season of hibernation, gestation, and visioning, urges us to prioritize stillness, inner listening, and patience with what feels gritty and, frankly, uncomfortable. And I like to say that if this season were to whisper us all some words of encouragement, they might be, have faith, my sweet this too shall pass. Because here's the thing, even if you're not experiencing winter geographically, most likely you're nose to nose with transition and uncertainty. And I came across something that I think you'll find helpful in the midst of this. So last week we welcomed women between the ages of 26 and 65 from over 14 countries into this year's She School. We've enjoyed introducing ourselves and sharing our intentions in our private Facebook group. And this week, we're stepping into our first live gathering, a video She Yoga and Meditation Retreat. Side note, it's actually not too late to join us for the She School. If you want in for this year's journey, you can still do so at theshe-school.com, but only for a few more days before we get too deep into the course materials. Anyway, One of the things that I shared with our group this past week was a she talk on our theme for February, which is leaving your normal life. And this is the first step along our nine part heroine's journey. And the central lesson of this month is that a woman's initiation into greater wisdom and power always begins with a crisis. And as my behind the scenes team here at The Way the Happy Woman was preparing this audio for our She School sisters, they voiced to me that the message that I offer in it is so valuable and relevant for the time we're currently living in that I should consider sharing a slice of it with our wider community. So today I'm doing just that. Please enjoy this impromptu She Talk as a gift from me to you and as a little taste of what I share in the She School. So take a deep breath. Take another deep breath over the front surface of your heart. Say yes to whatever you feel and find there and welcome home. Leaving your normal life. the first step on our heroine's journey. The heroine's journey begins with crisis. Crisis as the doorway. Crisis as the launching point for an initiation into something bigger than we're already currently experiencing, something, someone greater than we currently are. And it propels us into the fundamental nature of reality, which is tremendous uncertainty, tremendous groundlessness. And we have a little problem here because we are raised and are, we are wired neurologically to avoid feeling that at all costs to avoid feeling the fear of the uncertainty, to avoid feeling the terror of our fundamental aloneness.
And so when we're called onto the heroine's journey, it's a jolt. Usually we're blindsided. We get the phone call. Someone sits us down and has the conversation. We get slammed by a car and in an instant, our life is either over or it has changed forever. This is how the heroine's journey starts. It starts with a jolt, it starts with a shock, it starts with a trauma. And we need spaces like this to unpack it, to learn the tools to be with ourselves, to be with others in the face of dissolution. Because there is, it's socially unacceptable to be in crisis. to be out in the world in a state of complete undoneness, complete dissolution. So even more so, we need safe harbors, we need refuges of radical truth telling, of unending compassion, of free flowing support, of spiritual friendship. So if you are not in crisis now, you have been and you know what I'm talking about. And if you are in crisis now, then you know that your life is hell. And it sucks. And it's gonna be that way for a while. And all of us know that more crises are coming. So we can see people go through their crises, we can support them and weathering them, and, and we can remind ourselves, this, this is coming for me too. I am not immune from this. I too will have to face this immense suffering. So in Tibet, traditional Tibet, there was a, a prayer to actually suffer more in order to grow more. And so we know that if we don't reach these harrowing moments in our lives, we're not gonna grow, we're, we cling too much. We want safety, we want security, we want love, even if that love is not a true love, it's more of an attachment to having something or someone there. Our clinginess, our neediness is so strong. Our attachments are so strong to others, to ourselves, to our lives looking a certain way that if we're not blindsided, we're not, there's no way that we're gonna change. We're creatures of habit. So in this, in this way, even if when we're in crisis, we can't find even a sliver of gratitude, we know that one day we will. For that, for that stretch of our lives. So as we step into this journey together, the most important thing is that we take our first step, acknowledging that there's no ground to step on. There is no ground to step on. Our inner attitude is one of uncertainty. Nothing is certain in this life, nothing. 
Take nothing for granted. Things can change in an instant, irrevocably, forever. So look around the room that you're in, look around at the life you have, and know that it's not here forever. It is going to change, and it's not going to change on your terms. So we step forward knowing there is no ground. We step forward knowing there is no certainty. And feeling anything and everything that arises through that acknowledgement, the fear, the sadness, the neediness, the ache. Because so often we we build these false structures of our lives just so we don't have to feel those things. I think that if we have the right plans, if we have the right strategy, then we won't have to feel those things. So we are all here because we're called to more mature, more awake womanhood. And this is the ground. This is the foundation. that there is no avoiding feeling anything. So when we start on the heroine's journey, there's a mountain in front of us and we can't just ignore the mountain. We have to, we have to climb it. And we, we can procrastinate and stay at the foot of the mountain and kind of pretend that it's not there. But one day we, we have to face that it's there and we are the only ones that can climb it. We are the only ones that can make that journey. So when we leave our normal life, and I want to add that for, for those of you who are not in crisis in this particular moment, it could also be a call to express yourself in a freer, more, uh, a happier, more ecstatic way in the world to risk a fuller expression of yourself, which can also feel like a death. And that is also socially unacceptable. There's not a place to be all the way at the rock, rock bottom. There's not a place to be freely, expansively ecstatic. There's only kind of a middle ground of, of normalcy, which is an untruth. We're always in transition of some form or another, and sometimes that's going to be very, very extreme. So the only way out is in and through facing all parts of yourself. There's no hiding from anything. And there's a saying about the divine, about source, whatever you want to call this larger web that is holding us all. And that is pay me now or pay me later. So when, when are we going to pay up? When are we going to learn the lessons to face the truth, to feel the feelings, to stop running? To see that as the path forward. So when we leave our normal life, there, there is rightfully so a lot of grief. There's a lot to be let go of, a lot to be renounced. And some of you may be in that phase right now, just needing to let go of structures, of possessions, of relationships, of self identities. Some of you may not be in such an extreme place and maybe it's more of a symbolic gesture 
If there's something that you're very attached to, can you give that away to someone? Something, a piece of clothing or a piece of jewelry that you really cherish. What would it take for you to give that to someone else, to let go of that? Can you do that? So at the start of the journey, there's a heartbreak. There's a heartbreak. It starts in the heart. There's a heartbreak and it's through that heartbreak. It's the knowing, it's the, the discovering, it's the start of the journey to awaken this heart. And to discover that this heart is fundamentally unbreakable, unbreakable. And how is it that we can love without attachment? That we can have compassion with open eyes, open ears, open heart. That our love can transcend our wounds, our disappointments. So when we leave our normal life, we're stepping out of the nightmare that somehow we were conditioned to live in that if we just are perfect enough, if we just have the right plan, that everything is going to be fine. And we are initiated, we are shoved, we are blindsided in off the cliff into this free falling reality that there's, there's no plan, <laughs> at least some, there's no plan that we could create. There's, there's no ground to really build anything on. And we need to learn how to live in that true, absolute reality. To feel safe, to feel secure amidst this truth of our fundamental groundlessness. All right, my dears, it is time to say farewell for now. And I hope that the teachings I've shared this past month here on the podcast have sparked some more wisdom and strength in your inner and outer life. And that's why so many of the women in the She School come back year after year. In fact, some in 2017 are joining us for the third, the fourth, some even the fifth year in a row. And yes, while the She School officially began on February 1st, we are softly open for registration for a few more days before we get too deep into the program materials. And since it is a nine month program, really in-depth journey, we only open up registration once a year. So this is really your last chance until 2018. If you wanna go deeper into how to cultivate a greater stronger version of you through whatever adversity you're currently facing and to do so within the safe harbor of sisterly connection and compassion with a wellspring of wisdom teachings in women's yoga and meditation and empowerment. I hope you'll explore the She School at theSheSchool.com. It is my great wish that these teachings offer some salve and strength for your spirit as we step into the second half of this winter season together. And until we meet again, I'm sending you my heartfelt support. Thank you so much for being part of our sisterhood.